people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new lecture. So today, we are learning pointers in C programming. Yes, this is the topic that separates the wannabe programmers from the ones who really know how to do programming. Uh, this is what you'll be needing the most when you move ahead of C and go into your next bigger subject, DSA. You want to make data structures, linked lists, queues, search trees, etc. You need to know pointers very well. It's going to be a long lecture. I'm going to start from absolute basics, but by the time we finish, I'm going to make you a champion in this topic. I promise you that. Now, what are we doing today? So first I'll show you what is the concept of pointers. Uh, what is a pointer? It's a variable. Just like you have other variables, int a, int b, you create variables, right? So pointer is also a variable with the difference that a normal variable is created with the purpose of storing some data. A pointer is created with the purpose of storing an address of another variable. I'll say this again. A pointer is also a variable, but its purpose is not to hold data. Its purpose is to hold the address of another variable. So you would say, why? Why would I want to do that? So many people say pointers are just created to give us headache. Till before pointer C was so easy. So there are two types of programmers in C. Those who know pointers and those who don't. As simple as that. This is where, like I said, you uh, separate the ordinary crowd from the cream. Anyway, pointers have massive use. Like I just said, with a pointer, you can access a variable through its address. So what do you gain from that? Moving the address up and down, you can access the data around that variable. Why would you want to do that? Keep one thing in mind. No data is stored alone as a singular data in the memory. This never happens in the real world. Yes, it happens in your programs when you add two numbers. You will define A and B and think that yeah, this is how all the programming in the world is done. No, it's not. In real world, data is not one byte or two byte. Data is kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, etc. Tell me, do you agree with me? I'll prove it to you. Uh, an image, a video, those Instagram reels that you see, or uh, those YouTube videos that you watch, or songs that you listen, they're not one or two bytes. They're all kilobyte, megabyte, gigabytes. Do you understand that? Which means, when you look at programming from a real life perspective, from a programmer's point of view, you're never really accessing one data you're always accessing a series of data. And when you want to access a series of data, this friend of yours called a pointer is most useful because what a pointer does is it gives you the access, the key to that location where your data is stored. And thereafter, moving the pointer up, down, sequentially, randomly, intermittently with gaps of two, three, four, six, etc., you can access any part of your file of your data are you clear? So when you want to move away from just add two numbers and doing basic college level programming to calling yourself a person who can do real life industrial programming, you need to know pointers very well because this is what you'll be using the most. There will be a point of time after which this point pointers will be your natural way of writing programming, will be your first choice for even for doing programs which could have been done without pointers. You'll get so used to them that eventually this is how you'll be writing all your code. Anyway, anyway, uh, those who learn microprocessors from me or microcontrollers from me, we've done so many programs when we access a series of locations. Yeah, indirect addressing mode. Pointers are what? HL pair and M in 8085, R0, R1 in 8051, DX register in 8086, etc. These are all memory pointers. Over there, we use them in assembly language. Here, we are using in a higher level language. Anyway, uh, so I'll show you how to create a pointer. What's the advantage of pointers? Like I said, you can access various locations. There's one more advantage. Something that is asked always, whether it's interview, whether it's viva, whether it's uh, gate exam, whether it's anything related to C, this question is something that you find always in the exam. What's the difference between call by value and call by reference? Yes. Call by reference is where you use a pointer. So that's another place where pointers are extremely useful when you want to not create extra values of the data. Now, to give you a very simple example, okay, it's much easier to understand. I've seen uh, material on it, I've read material on it. I don't know why people make it so complicated, though it's such an easy concept. Think of it, we all listen to music. Okay, let's connect over there. So we all listen to music. Uh, some of us just like to listen to whatever comes like on radio. 
most of us create our own playlist right we have some choice our favorite artist our favorite kind of genre etc so you create a playlist now what happens you have songs in your computer or in your phone you create a new playlist i create a playlist every year so on my phone you'll always find b2020 b2021 etc b4 but so anyway uh, so uh, when you create a playlist let's say you created a new playlist right now you decide you want to add only hip hop songs in it as an example whatever genre comes to your mind so you will go through your phone you will see all the songs click add to playlist add to playlist etc so what happens all these songs come into your playlist and then you can play your playlist great this is where a layman's knowledge ends that i have added songs to a playlist this is where a computer programmer starts understanding what's going on the song is not gone to the playlist let's not be stupid over here what is gone is a pointer to that song are you clear in that playlist what does the song is stored where it was stored the playlist wants your song but the playlist is telling don't give me the song just tell me where it is when i have to play it i'll go to that location and play it tell me did you understand this so that's where you don't that's the difference between call by value and call by reference if it is call by value you send your whole data over there if it's call by reference you just send a pointer to that data are you clear <laughs> that's call by reference and for that what did i say what do you send pointers so next time you add songs to your playlist oh this concept extends a lot what you see on youtube uh, you see or uh, when you open youtube you see those list of videos you know those thumbnails everywhere you see and you like uh, oh yeah so i may play this video or i may play this video so for a person who doesn't have too much knowledge about computers that person would think all those videos are there on your uh, home screen those videos are not there just pointers to those videos are there are you clear and to make the pointer look good there's a thumbnail same is the representation of all the apps on your screen Do you understand that all those apps are nothing else but programs? When for a fool, all those programs are there on your home screen. To an intelligent program programmer, all those programs are there wherever they are stored in the memory. What you see on the screen are just pointers. Pointers means addresses. Now, instead of having pointers which may not look that beautiful, there is a thumbnail. There is an icon for every app. When you click on an app, you basically access its pointer. That's a call by reference. Again, you go to that actual location where the program is stored, and then you execute. So that means you can, by call by reference, you can pass data. You can even pass functions. That's a function. Anyway, anyway, when we do it, you will understand. I'm just giving you the idea because you should know what you are learning. Many a times, people stop learning wonderful things for the simple reason that people. Teach them everything about it without telling them the actual use, where it is used. It's used all over there. Next time you're on Instagram, on your home screen, you see all those icons of uh, people's stories, right on the top. What are they? Pointers. Those stories are stored wherever they are stored. They are not on your phone as of now. As you click on them, as you surf through them, they come on your phone. Yes, as a preemptive measure to make it a little more uh, snappy and uh, for good UI, UI UX experience. Uh, a little bit of that data starts coming into your cache assuming that you may start watching it so that your transition is smooth but basically all those stories have not come they are all pointers to that respective data and so on so everywhere by now you got the idea everything that we do in computers uses pointers so this is where you peak at your learning of basic c programming and you equip yourself to start learning data structures the next gradual step in a programmer's journey all right so like i said pointers are used in arrays linked list data structures tree and queues stacks etc and so on now i'm going to show you how to declare a pointer how to use a pointer what's the difference between writing that star pointer and what's the difference between writing and with a variable and just the name of a pointer etc then something where of course everything that we do will be with a program I and mean, you can't teach theory of programming programming is taught by doing programs correct i can't give you a theory lecture about how to swim <laughs> till the time you don't go get into the water and do it or till the time you don't i can't teach you by theory how to drive a car these are skills so is programming it's a skill so you can only learn it by doing it so everything that i'm telling you will be actually doing it by on code on at the time on the screen okay i'll be typing out the program showing you various pros and cons and then you play with the program you change a few things and see how it works anyway so i'll show you basic working of a pointer then i'll show you what is pointer arithmetic super important all right 
what did I say? A pointer is not used just to access one location. The essence, the concept of a pointer is to access a series of locations. And when you say a series of locations, you may either go forward or you may go backward. You may go two steps, four steps, six steps ahead together, or you may go one by one, similarly backwards. So here comes pointer arithmetic. Very important to understand. Without knowing this, you cannot move ahead in your actual use of a pointer when you're going to use it to access a series of data. So with umpteen examples, as you can see, uh, in fact, more as we do it here, just to show you a snapshot of what's going to happen. With umpteen examples, I'm going to show you pointer arithmetic with integer data type, long integer, float, double, short integer, whatever you want to. Just different kind of data types, how pointer arithmetic works. Because like I said, this is something you need to know to go ahead. Then will come a whole series of programs. There's going to be a big lecture. We are creatures of habit. The more we do it, the better we get at it. So just telling you what is a pointer and wrapping up the lecture, know that shortcut. I've, I've never taken that. You know that. If you learned anything from me, you know that. So we're going to do program after program after program, starting with simple ones, going into big ones, going into exam questions. The last three, four programs that we're going to do are all popular exam questions. As you hear the names, you will come to know that. Yes, you have seen it in question papers. Anyway, so first thing, since I said a pointer is used to access a series of data, the simplest series of data that you know is an array. So I'm going to show you how to use a pointer to access an array. Uh, then I'm going to show you how to use a pointer to access a string. What is a string? A character array. So instead of an integer array, a character array. This is accessing pointers by a string is very popular. It's one of the most important uh, uses of pointers from exam point of view. Are you clear? They'll give you a string. They'll ask you to traverse the string forward, backward, identify the vowels, change the uh, case, lowercase, uppercase, and all of them using pointers. So this is something that it has to... It should be so natural to you that you should be able to do it, you know, subconsciously because a lot of programming of pointers is based on accessing strings. So we are going to spend a lot of time on this. So accessing a string, a predefined string, a user given string, accessing using for loop, accessing using while loop, then I'm going to input output. So you take the string from the user, output the string from on, onto the user, back to the user, modify the string, manipulate it. Uh, example of uh, identifying vowels of a string. These are all exam questions now. Then the same vowel of a string using a function. When you say using a function, what changes over here? You're not doing everything in your main program. You are passing your string to the function which will find the vowels. When I say you passing a string, your string, whatever the string, okay, this is testing with a function, that's a string, it could be any string. Are you really passing the whole string? Come on, come on. Are you passing the whole string? No. What are you passing? Pointer to the string. Are you clear? So I'm going to show you not only finding vowels, which we did already, but doing the same thing using a function where I will pass this whole string as a pointer to this function. And the function will accept that pointer. From that pointer will access the string and pick up all, all the vowels. These are all exam questions. Um, you don't directly learn a big program. You start, start from the most basic concept. Like I said, we first see what is a pointer, how to access the pointer, how to access it for a series of locations, moving into an array, moving into a string, then playing with it. The next one, string reversal, super popular question. They will ask you to type any string. The string will be given by the user at runtime. So here two things come into picture. First, accepting the string from the user and then reversing it and displaying back on the screen using pointers. Uh, the idea is one pointer will point to the beginning of the string. The other pointer will point to the end of the string. You'll exchange the first and the last data. The first, the initial pointer will move ahead. The last pointer will move behind. And this will go on happening till the time the two pointers meet, which means all the data has been exchanged and the strings are reversed without using any temporary string or a third string, just a variable used for exchange. Then we will see what is the difference between call by value and call by reference with an example. This is a typical exam question again. Explain with an example the difference between call by value and call by reference. I could also give you the theory answer, but this theory answer you'll get everywhere in the world because it's the most one of the most popularly asked questions in C programming. Just Google search or go to chat GPT and just type uh, difference between call by value, call by reference, you'll see 10, 12 theory answers. All those theory answers point, all those points. 
you will understand the moment you understand this program. So I'm going to show you the program, the real application of what's the difference between call by value and call by reference. This is the scope of this lecture. Now, this entire lecture and the whole course of C programming is available on my website, bharatacharyaeducation.com. The link is given down below. I teach various subjects. These are all the courses that I've made so far. There are many more subjects that I teach. I will make courses. Uh, we are nearing the end of C programming course. So immediately after this, could be a DSA course, could be embedded C. Both of them students are requesting a lot, whichever one I deem right. I'll make right now, I've not even thought about it. Right now, I just want to complete the C programming course. So it's nearly completion, just one more video after this. Anyway, uh, so the link is given down below. Click on the link. Start learning. Enough of planning, enough of thinking. Someday I'll learn. The whole world is learning programming. I don't need to tell you. Look around. You open your eyes. An engineer today who doesn't know programming is so, it's so difficult for him or her to move ahead in their career. Some point in time, they will have to start learning. I am a teacher since 22 years. I've come across people from all age groups. I hear stories. Students approach me. Sir, I'm 40, I'm 45, I'm 50 and I'm I still 50. Okay. You do it for the sake of uh, a hobby or interest. But below that, 30, 35, 40, 45, that age group is still starting to learn programming because at some point they realize if they don't know this, they are nowhere in the modern world. You are not only competing with your fellow engineers in the slightly uh, senior ones, you're competing with a whole batch of juniors, which is going to come and hit like a tsunami because now people are learning programming in school. Not that people earlier they didn't, earlier they did, but it was too casual. It was a vocational subject. Now it is a part of the curriculum, which means they're seriously learning programming in school. So when you graduate, the batch below you will be the ones who are learning programming from much before you are. So when they pass out, they are going to compete and they'll be so capable that they'll be able to not only get their jobs, but the jobs that is now being allotted to people two, three years, four, five years senior to them. So be prepared for that whole wave, which is now in the making and soon will be out. So equip yourself with this knowledge. You need to learn programming in one language, whether it's C, C++, Java, Python, doesn't matter one language you got to be confident in once you know programming in one language you know the skill of programming you know how to handle loops how to handle conditions how to handle functions pass parameters arrays and the whole thing once you know that then moving to another language is just about syntax and the ide and just getting used to the shortcuts but basically the concept of programming remains the same the reason why of all languages i start with the c course is because this is the most widely learned even today when you move ahead subjects like dsa subjects like computer graphics operating systems all their practicals are done in c programming in their books written on them so that's why colleges also don't want to change that so you may start with python at a lower semester but you know that at some point in engineering in your engineering part in your engineering course you will require c because the subjects are doing programming in c language that is the reason why i suggest students start with c and of course if embedded systems is your uh, field of uh, interest then you need to know c because most of the times you'll be doing programming in embedded c anyway so uh, hope to see you there Wish you all the best. Do well. We are going ahead.